Hello and welcome to what is only our second Q&A for Inside Lane. Um, I may make these more frequent actually if people are interested. I have here some of your questions, some of the most frequently asked and a few particulars from individuals. Um, and this is sort of your opportunity to ask me, well, just about anything, opinions on cars or what's coming out or motoring journalism in general. So let's kick off without further ado. Um, many of you have asked what camera do we use when we're filming? Now, primarily, because we use a multitude of cameras, uh, it is a Canon 70D. And I have a little note here from our chap who looks after our cameras and things because it's far too technical for my mind. Uh, it has attached to it a lens, which is an EF 16 to 35 millimeter wide angle lens. Apparently that makes all the difference. Um, obviously the equipment's not cheap, and, but it's definitely worth the investment to produce high quality videos for you guys to watch. Uh, you guys don't want to watch something that's grainy quality. Uh, you know, I could, I could show you the most amazing thing, but if the picture quality is crap, then you're not going to bother watching it. Um, the next question is, what did I think of Top Gear? So I'm presuming this quite, you know, it's quite a widespread question. People in general are asking about the latest series. Um, it didn't go according to plan for the BBC, did it? Chris Evans really didn't work out. But then whilst it was a disaster in some areas, I think some new stars were shown to the world in Chris Harris and Rory Reid. I think those two did an astonishing job. They both really know their cars. Um, and Rory's sort of creative direction and, and uh, scripting really shines through. Um, I think he is somebody to watch out for. And Chris Harris is a very good on-screen presence. He can drive very, very well, as you can see demonstrated on there. Um, He's done a lot of YouTube stuff before. You, most of you know Chris Harris on cars. Um, yeah, I thought Chris did really, really well. I actually did a whole little video on just a, a brief um, what I thought of Top Gear, what changes should be made and what to expect from the second of the all new series. Uh, so if you check that link out, there's more answers for you there. Um, now, when we did a review of the new Toyota Mirai hydrogen car, many of you guys were asking, what do I think of hydrogen cars in general? Are they the future? Are they a bit of a distraction? Should we just focus on electricity? What do you think? Um, well, that's, that's a very broad, broad question. So let's narrow it in a little bit. Is hydrogen the future? Um, I think it probably is. In terms of renewable energy, hydrogen is the most abundant resource in the universe. We will never, ever run out of it. So making that a fuel source is a very good idea, obviously, because unlike oil, where it'll eventually run out and things, they, they tell us every five minutes it's going to run out and it never seems to. Um, I do, right, sorry, don't environmentalists, please don't pitch in here. Um, but yes, hydrogen is going to be a good, clean source of energy. Um, will it work in cars? Yes, it will. It worked very well in the Toyota Mirai and the best compliment I could pay it was that it just drove like a normal car. And that's exactly what these things need to be. They don't need to be space age. They need to be approachable and they need to be what people expect a car to be. Uh, the Mirai did a very good job of that. The downside obviously is the extreme cost of being an early adopter of this technology. Um, it's like anything, you get the latest iPhone, you're gonna pay the, through the nose for it. Okay, it's a very amplified um, way of, of showing that, but you're going to pay a lot to be early to have a hydrogen car. But thank goodness these people are because they are paving the way for hydrogen technology to be cheaper because they're showing that there is some demand for it. Um, electric cars. Uh, in the UK recently, I have to just touch on this because it really annoyed me. In the UK, uh, electric cars have just taken a step backwards because... Uh, people were starting to buy them, there was more and more interest, you could run it for pennies and things like that. And then the lead provider of electric charging stations down all of the motorways of the UK have now started charging a ridiculous £6 to charge your car for half an hour. And whilst I appreciate you have to charge for the electricity eventually because it's, it's been free for a couple of years, you have to start charging because you have to make money, it's a business. Um, but six pounds actually on a motorway journey on electric cars and things actually makes it more expensive to run than a diesel car. And the company's really inadequate response was, well, it's the fault of everyone with a plug-in hybrid because they're clogging all the stations. No, we need to build more stations. Uh, that's a load of rubbish. They weren't fussy about who 
used their charging stations when it first started out because it got them a lot of attention and they had all these wonderful figures to show the government, look, so many people are charging at our stations, please give us more money. Um, and now they're on their own and they're like, oh, well, we've got to raise money from somewhere and it's clearly not as profitable. Where electric cars go from now on, I don't know, but I just feel sorry for anybody who has just bought an electric car with all the, you know, thinking that all these assets are available to them and now it's going to be a very costly endeavour indeed. Sorry, babbled on a bit there. Um, plenty of you have asked in previous reviews, what is the best first car to buy if you're going to go and buy one new? Um, I'm thinking of doing a, a bigger video on this because I think it's a bit of a hot topic, but just off the top of my head, I think the one litre EcoBoost Ford Fiesta is great. It's got enough poke despite being a one litre car. Uh, it's got a good amount of space. I think the car looks really good as well. Um, and particularly for young people, image is a big thing. I, th I think the, uh, the Fiesta ticks a lot of boxes and it, it handles brilliantly. For people who care about that, it handles really well also. What else have we got? How did you become a motoring journalist? Now, again, I know I keep saying I'm doing these various spin-off videos. We've got this video scripted and ready. To, it just needs to be shot and narrated. Um, within the next two to three weeks, I promise you, I'll put a video out that tells maybe a bit more of a personal story of motoring journalism, because I didn't come into motoring journalism uh, through the traditional method, let's say, and that in itself uh, showed me a, a varying degrees of adversity. I've been doing this for about five years now, and I'm established and have the respect of my peers, but it wasn't always that way. Uh, so a video will come out that will tell that story, because I think it's one that people are intrigued by. Journalism is sort of cloaked in shadows people don't really know how it works from the outside it's a very closed environment so uh, i'm hoping to shed a little bit of light on that too um wayne capitelli cap oh sorry capatici sorry i've i've butchered your name horrifically my apologies wayne um what do i make of the aston martin amr b001 well, it's a phenomenal thing, isn't it? We were at uh, Aston Martin HQ for the unveiling. Daniel Ricciardo pulled the dust cover off the car. And it's just, it's like something from outer space, isn't it? It is so alien. And this is what happens when you take, up, take the rule book, throw it away and replace it with Adrian Newey, who really knows his onions when it comes to aerodynamics. Um, I think Aston, it's a great move by Aston Martin, this partnership with Red Bull. Um, I think it's great for Red Bull because they can show off uh, a lot of their technologies and the development in the car. Aston Martin get to prove to the world that they can produce a car uh, that is quite likely, to be honest, uh, to, to be able to surpass LaFerrari, McLaren P1, Koenigsegg 11, Porsche 918, etc. Et um, it's so incredibly light. It's a dinky little thing, tiny car. Uh, and they're saying it's going to, you know, the road version is going to be as fast as sort of LMP1 race car. Uh, and then there's a track version as well, which will go even faster. Interesting times ahead for Aston Martin. We hope to be doing more with Aston Martin in the future, actually, because they very kindly invited us to that unveiling. If you haven't seen that video, do check it out because it's well worth a watch. Interesting machine indeed. Um, last question. So uh, last week we did a video. I, I had like a spare five minutes and a melted chocolate bar. And whilst we we're setting up other cameras, I was like, oh, can this Skoda that I'm testing save my chocolate bar because we've all had it melted chocolate bars in the car and it's a disaster nine times out of ten you end up sort of drinking it like some sort of yogurt but i used the aircon and managed to breathe some life into it and from that um ruben ahmed has asked what is your favorite chocolate well in it's no coincidence that in the video i used a whisper it's because that was genuinely for my lunch that day i really like whispers um but i'm also quite fond of toffee crisp so yes, there's a lot coming up on Inside Lane. So whilst that's the end of our second ever Q&A, there may be more of those to come actually, if that proves to be to your liking. Um, we have lots coming up, plenty more road tests, a few more interesting videos that go a bit more in depth into other topics. We've also got news talk starting next week, a week today. That's our new news show, which will bring you all up to date every week with what's going on with a fair bit of chat. And we want your uh, interaction with that too. Um, yeah, and there's lots of exciting stuff coming up. Some things I cannot tell you at the moment because it's in the planning stages. So thanks very much for watching and I will catch you guys on whatever video is next.
Thanks very much for watching and let us know what you think in the comments below. Please subscribe for more on the latest and greatest cars to hit the road. For all of the latest automotive news, written reviews and coverage from motor shows, go to www.insidelane.co.uk.